the Wizards will have the 10th pick of the 2022 NBA Draft. Welcome back to DMV Sports Zone. Chase down by Beal in the corner for three, gets fouled, and hits! Welcome to DC. Walk time him out. You know where you're at, the USA Cap. You're taking it slightly, I'm taking it slightly. What is going on, everybody? It's your boy Abdullah coming at you with another video for the channel. Welcome back to the Davey Sports Zone. And in today, guys, I'm coming at you with a Wizards NBA Draft Lottery reaction. A pretty late reaction. I'm sorry about that. I've been busy for the past couple of days. But before I get into this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe for more DMV Sports content. And let's get straight to the video. Well, guys, again, when it comes to the Wizards, they just have no luck. Just time and time again are in the middle of the pack. And as I said last year, we can't tank because when we want the Wizards to win, they don't win. But we, when we want them to lose, they win. It's the Washington Wizards cycle, you know what I'm saying? But going into the NBA lottery, we had a 3% chance of getting the number one overall pick and a 13.9% chance of taking a top four pick. Like I said, just no luck. I ended up with the 10th pick as we were projected. Now, what do we do? And this all goes back to what we do with Bradley Beal. Five years, $248 million. That's a lot of money, guys. Especially for a guy who, and I love Bradley Beal, but I just don't think he's the number one option on the championship team. Now, do I know any prospects? Probably not. I haven't really done my research. But there's speculation on if the Wizards should trade the 10th pick and get like a veteran point guard in the offseason like a Malcolm Brogdon or, I don't know, Maybe a guy like Corey Joseph, but it just depends on for agency. But again, we're just with the cap space, we're paying guys, veterans like Kentavious, Caldwell, Pope, and I don't know, I can't think of other guys, but I just don't know what we're going to do. And I just, it just all goes back to the fact that what is Tommy Shepard going to do with Bradley Beal? Are we going to keep him and still give him talent around him? Or are we just going to let him go, sign and trade? I don't know. But the big part is if Bradley Beal does get signed for long term, and then five years down the road, he complains about not having talent around him. Well, what do you expect when you're taking 40% of your team's cap space? What can your general manager do? So this is all just speculation. But going into the draft, guys, we need a point guard. I don't want John Wall. And I, I, and I don't hate John Wall. I love John Wall. I'm one of my favorite players. The reason why I started watching basketball. But at the end of the day, that chapter was in the past. We have to move on. I really love the fact that Tommy Shepard and is, hasn't like denied the fact that we could go after John Wall, but at the end of the day, that guy's making a lot of money, and we traded him for a reason. And it was a lot of a lot of. Uh, I'm pretty sure it took a lot of calls for to get rid of him and his contract, but we just need a young guy. And for the past couple of years, we've taken guys wings like Kelly Oubre, Danny Avdia, uh, Rui Hachimura. I'm blanking out on Corey Kispert. I mean, obviously, shooters would be nice to space the floor. But we just need a point guard. We don't have a, a, a starting caliber point guard. We just got to develop a young point guard like we did with John Wall. And we haven't drafted a big man either. So this cycle of being a Washington fan, it's just... I've been a fan since 2014, so about six or seven, eight years. Ah, oh, that's crazy. And I didn't realize that back then was the prime years to be a Wizards fan. So... Yeah, the draft is just, it's a crapshoot. It, it is, like, we just don't know what we're going to do and what type of guy we're going to get at pick 10. Guys like Paul George has gone in the past, CJ McCollum, Austin Rivers. You never know if you get a really good solid player, a player that will probably end up not be on the team a couple of years or an all-star caliber, caliber player. So let me know what you guys' thoughts on the number 10 overall pick. What should the Wizards do? I'll eventually go into a video where some prospects that we could go after. A guy like Jaden Ivey, if he falls out of the top four, do we trade back in or do we trade in the top five or top seven to get a guy like him? Or do we have a trade package with a 10th pick and get a guy like DeJounte Murray this offseason? I don't know. I really don't know. It's, it just all depends on the Bradley Beal situation, his contract. Because again, guys, I just don't think he's worth the money. Let me say this one more time. I love Brad. He is the reason why the Wizards are relevant. 
But at the end of the day, when you're taking that much cap space and you're not a number one option, you just came off a surgery, you know, injuries have been lingering him in the past. What can you say about him? So that's pretty much it, guys. Number 10 overall pick for our beloved Washington Wizards. <sighs> the cycle of just beating me, of the Wizards being mediocre, it hurts, man. But oh, I, I think Tommy Shepard can change it around. And obviously, Wes Unsell Jr., his first season, it was started off great and just ended off terrible. But let me know your guys' thoughts. Make sure to follow us on social media Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at DMV Sports Zone. On the road to 2,000 subscribers. And yeah. Peace.